After they returned from the park, Yin walked towards her room to rest, while JK stayed in the living room as he received a call from Jin. How is Yin doing? She's doing fine brother, her condition has been improving this month. Thank goodness, I'm relieved to hear that. And what about the person threatening her, have you found them? Not yet, we haven't been able to identify the culprit. I'm sure it's our father who's threatening her, I'm sure, because he's the one who wants Yin dead. Brother, how can you accuse your own father? Wasn't the person Yin saw a young man? I used to think that way too, but I have a feeling that dad instructed someone to threaten her. Is that so? <coughs> Suddenly, JK hears Yin scream from her room. Brother, I'll call you back later. JK abruptly ends the call and rushes to Yin. He opens Yin's room and looks around. His eyes glance at the mirror with words written in blood. His eyes then shift to Yin, who has been sitting weakly, seeing blood everywhere. How could he find Yin? Hey, all of you, monitor the CCTV right now. JK calls his guards. Yes, young master. JK immediately approaches Yin, who is trembling and sweating, her mouth uttering something that makes JK stare sharply at the mirror. JK, he's back. He wants to kill me. He wants to kill me again. I don't want to be killed by him. Instantly, Yin bursts into tears. JK immediately embraces her, holding her tightly to comfort her. Yin, calm down. I'm here. You won't die because I will protect you. JK says while stroking her head and back. Yin responds by hugging JK tightly. I'll kill you before you kill Yin. A girl is running barefoot in the forest. Occasionally, she looks back to make sure no one is following her. Her heavy breathing from continuous running forces her to stop momentarily to rest, but she thinks it's not the time to rest. Instinctively, she places her hand on her chest, which is beating rapidly, and her hands immediately pat her chest due to the pain caused by exhaustion. What is this? Is he still chasing me? She whispers while looking around the dark forest. Suddenly, someone grabs her hand and pushes her against a tree trunk, causing her to grimace in pain. Yin, are you okay? Are you hurt? JK, how did you get here? Yin asks back. Without answering Yin's question, JK immediately brings Yin into his embrace, holding her tightly. Finally, I found you. You have no idea how hard I've been looking for you. He says, continuously stroking his long hair. Yin, who has been silent the whole time, hides her face in his chest. But the moment doesn't last long. While they are hugging, they hear gunshots from behind Yin. Hearing the sound, JK promptly shields Yin behind his back. They hear footsteps blending with the sound of dry leaves. He approaches JK and Yin with a gun in his hand, ready to shoot. So, you ran away from me? And it's quite a coincidence to find Mr. Jian here, says the man who continues to approach them. Yin, stay behind me. Whatever happens, I will protect you from this devil. JK says, still holding her hand from behind, with his other hand pulling out a pistol from his jacket. The man suddenly laughs loudly. Ha ha ha, turns out you already have a bodyguard, Yin. I hope you won't regret this later. Then he points his gun directly at JK. JK doesn't stay silent either. He aims his gun at the man. This time, I will make you leave this world and throw you into hell. JK grumbles, prepared for his shot. The man just smirks and quickly pulls the trigger of his pistol simultaneously with JK, but unluckily, it misses the target. Yin, who has been watching the gunfight, shocked by the sound, suddenly sees the man change his target towards her, who has been behind a tree to keep a safe distance. Seeing the man aiming for Yin, JK quickly runs towards her. Yin, watch out. Right when JK embraces Yin, the bullet pierces through his jacket, directly hitting his chest. With his remaining strength dwindling, JK returns fire hitting the old man's head, causing him to die on the spot. Yin's hands immediately wrap around JK, seeing blood continuously oozing from his shoulder. Yin pats his cheek and scans the forest for help, shouting at the top of her lungs to get someone's attention. Then his hand suddenly touches her cheek, gently caressing it. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you anymore. JK's words make Yin shed tears. No, JK, please don't leave me. I believe you can still hold on. Slowly, JK's eyes begin to close. Yin hugs JK tightly, crying uncontrollably. No JK. Yin just woke up from her nightmare, sweat covering her face with labored breathing. Yin instantly closes her eyes and bows her head, contemplating the dream that felt so real. JK, who has been outside her room, approaches her upon hearing her calling his name. Are you awake? JK, now sitting on the edge of the bed, right beside her. Seeing JK by her side, Yin quickly hugs him tightly. JK, 
Not understanding why she suddenly embraces him, softly pats her back. A sob is heard, prompting JK to release the hug and look at her. Tears stream down her face making JK curious about why she's crying. What's wrong Yin? Why are you suddenly crying? Did you just have a bad dream? He asked while gently stroking her hair. Yin shook her head and hugged JK tightly. She didn't want to share that tragic dream. Meanwhile, JK sighed softly, continuing to pat her back gently. A message popped up on JK's phone. With some difficulty, he retrieved it from his pocket, still embracing Yin. Opening the message, he read the content of the message. I've just started my game, and you've just entered my game. Let's see who will win in the end, Jian JK. Reading the message, JK stared intensely at his phone. His expression seemed to reflect deep hatred. He tucked his phone back into his pocket and glanced at Yin, who had fallen asleep in his embrace. Slowly, JK laid her down carefully, covering her with a blanket. Before leaving, he gently kissed her forehead. I'll always be with you and protect you, even if it means risking my own life. The next morning, the sun had risen from the east, illuminating the earth. A beautiful girl was sleeping soundly until the sunlight disturbed her. Yin opened her eyes, adjusting to the surroundings, and checked the clock it was already 8 in the morning. She felt a slight soreness in her body as if she had borne a heavy burden. Yin got up from bed, stretching her muscles, revealing her slender waist. A young man was standing in front of the door, enjoying the moment with a smile. JK was observing her as she stretched, unbeknownst to her. Yin turned around and was surprised to see JK smirking at her. Looks like I just enjoyed a very beautiful sight in the morning. He said as he approached her. Yin had been silent all this time, blinking both her eyes simultaneously, as JK walked towards her with a smirk still on his face, making her step back. She continued moving backward until a wall blocked her path. JK placed his hands on the wall, restricting her movement. JK and Yin's faces were now inches apart. It's still too early baby, do you want me to attack you hum? Yin's hair back suddenly stood on end upon hearing his voice. Her eyes dared not meet his gaze, which seemed ready to pounce on her. JK chuckled and distanced himself from her, successfully teasing her as she struggled to hold her breath. I was just kidding, lift your head and look at me. However, Yin shook her head and lowered it, closing her eyes. She was very afraid of that intimidating stare. JK sighed, then lifted her chin and raised it to see her face. Did I look scary earlier? Yin just nodded, and JK laughed softly, pulling Yin into an embrace. I'm sorry if my face scared you, I didn't know you were frightened. JK said but Yin pinched his waist hard. Ow, hey, that hurts. That's payback for daring to mess with me. Oh, my, it seems I'm starting to reveal your true nature, huh? JK teased again, prompting Yin to threaten him. If you dare to tease me again, I'll kick your banana with my foot. Yin threatened, sending shivers down JK's spine. JK quickly moved away from her while glancing at the lower part of his body. Don't be like that baby, if you kick it, you won't be able to enjoy it later. My banana is very special. No woman has touched it yet. Hearing that, Yin's face turned as red as a tomato. Hey, I didn't mean to enjoy your banana. Really? But I want you to enjoy it someday. Or do you want to enjoy it now? I'll give it to you. Stop it, JK. Why are you suddenly talking like this? Well, because I really want to enter you. I just remembered brother Jin, or else, I would have entered you long ago. Yin felt embarrassed, but she gathered the courage to push JK out of her room and lock the door. Leaning against the door, her heart pounded rapidly, and her cheeks and ears were now completely red. Meanwhile, JK, who was now standing outside her room, just chuckled at Yin's actions. Shortly after, he walked towards his own room. Now in his room, JK sat on the edge of the bed before lying down. His feet still dangled, touching the floor. His eyes stared at the ceiling of his room. Did I go too far with her? It doesn't seem like that. Besides, it's time for her to get used to things like that. If not, our relationship won't progress. Besides, I'm a normal guy. She should realize that. A small smirk appeared on his lips. Slowly, one of his hands started to touch the lower part of his body the precious banana. JK felt it hardening perfectly. Ah, uh, why now? It's so inconvenient. Finally, he got up and went straight into the bathroom. Ironically, I still have to do this when I already have a girlfriend, and she even lives with me. Is there a man more patient than me? Seriously. Soon after, strange sounds echoed from his mouth in the bathroom. 30 minutes later, the door to Yin's room was heard being knocked from the outside. Yin opened her bedroom door. Before her stood JK, smiling softly at her. Let's have breakfast, and then we'll head to the beach. Really? 
We're going to Jeju Island, so, after breakfast, let's pack up. Yin was thrilled to learn that they were going on vacation. She hugged JK, burying her face in his shoulder. JK simply smiled faintly, patting her back. All right, but first, let's have breakfast. Yin finally released her embrace, and JK immediately took her hand, leading her to the dining table for breakfast. After the terror incident that night, JK intentionally wanted to take Yin away from Seoul for a while. So, today, he planned to take her to Jeju Island for a vacation. Moreover, ever since JK returned from his business trip abroad, Yin seemed reluctant to let him go to work, so JK had to take a two-week leave to accompany her. JK and Yin got out of the car and entered the airport, assisted by some of his guards carrying a few items and two suitcases. JK looked around the airport, searching for someone waiting for them. Who are you looking for? Then someone was waving at JK, and he immediately approached that person. Ugh, why are you guys taking so long? I've been waiting for you for 15 minutes here. Yin, who had been following JK, was surprised to see that the person was Park Jaiman. However, her eyes caught a girl chatting with them. Rose? Yin called, and Rose turned to Yin, greeted her with a warm smile. Yin, finally, we meet again. Rose hugged Yin tightly with joy, and Yin reciprocated the hug. These two friends reunited, expressing their longing as they rarely met. Yin, I missed you so much. She whined, and Yin responded with a smile. Seeing the moment, Jaimin turned to JK. Don't you want to hug me like that, JK? Jaimin asked, making JK embarrassed to hear it. No need, you meet me almost every day, and besides, I don't want to hug you. Aish, you're not as sincere as my friend. JK and Jaimin just chuckled, getting ready to head to Jeju Island.